Happy Friday, Internet. I'm Udoka. Welcome to my channel. <laughs> On my channel, I talk about like my life and uh, life updates and also anything that just gave me a visceral reaction. And today, Lovely T's live stream gave me some visceral reactions. I felt like there's some things, there's some things that we could get into, <laughs> okay? Now first, let's talk about the wig. I got this wig so I can talk about the movie Karen. So I just wanted to look different today and I did not put got to be blue. So if you wanna hate on my wig, today absolutely let me know is it a bop or is it a not um also update i am training to become a professional dancer i got me some ballet slippers aren't they cute so if you want to see like a ballet haul let me know in the comments so I can know that it'll be worth my time and effort and energy to record and film and edit a ballet video. Um, if you're curious, it's not per, it's not specifically ballet I'm trying to be professional for. I want to join, you know, like a team like. Okay, I want the hair, I want the makeup, I want the pom-poms, I want the outfit. It's just a personal dream of mine. I don't have to be on Dallas Cowboy Cheerleaders team. There's so many teams. I'm in Dallas, so there's literally so many teams. <laughs> I basically have a year to get audition ready. And um, so let me know in the comments if you want to see that content as well. Lovely T, her video, her live stream today, I'm like reacting to everything. I have commentary on everything. I want to give my two cents. Today is going to be a little bit different than what I usually do when I record like this. I usually just record no editing because I couldn't be arsed to. But today, Bay was like, um, do you want to start like putting effort into your YouTube channel? <laughs> I was like, I was like, I'm just, I'm just, he's like, you know, like, I was like, it's time, it's time for a video. Put on, let's put on the wigs. Time for a video. <laughs> You lucky on that day I was acting cool, cuz. Nigga, what's up? How can you? Are you cuz? I don't fuck with you, cuz. You disrespecting me. I don't fuck with you, cuz. You disrespecting me. I go hard, cuz. Hey, you guys. I hope you guys are doing good. I'm into the party. When they first saw us, I kind of captured those moments. To Cardi B's birthday party. This is like how it Ugh. Ugh. Man, I would have paid money to go to a party. If there's one thing you need to know about me is I I I don't like going out, but if the party is insane bonkers, I want to be there. Yep. Everyone dressed up in crazy outfits and the alcohol is flowing and and it's just so cool like all these people that you just see pictures of all the time you get to party with them and like see who you actually vibe with not just who looks good in pictures but like who do you actually vibe with that's just so cool to me and like I also love getting into other people's mindsets like if you live a lifestyle that I just can't fathom. Oh, I want to meet you and get into your world. Like, that's so cool. So that was Lizzo walking in. And, you know, I saw Lizzo a few times there at the party. Now, I know it's been like a lot of controversy about her outfit, people going in on her. I'm going to say this. I thought, I don't think there was anything wrong with her outfit for the event, okay? Everybody's not a size two. Everybody is not built like an Instagram model. I mean, it's to the point where I feel self-conscious at times, even putting. So pretty much if you don't know about Lizzo's dress on a play, 
So this is a dress. I think it's a gorgeous dress. Her hair is gorgeous. Makeup gorgeous. Nails gorgeous. And I like the dress. I, th I think it's so cute. And it, there's absolutely nothing wrong with it, especially at a dance hall party where everybody is dressed crazy, scantily clad, like just, just wear what you think is cute and sexy. You know what I mean? Totally, totally. I just love it. And, um, you know, we know that there's people who are fat phobic. I like, please, if you want to come in my comments talking about the dress doesn't look good on her, please just say you're not comfortable with people being fat. Like, just say, like, please just say it. Like, like, just say, like, literally just say it. So there's people like that. And then there's like people who just blatantly fat phobic calling her out, like literally being upset about it. I, um, if you, if like this makes you upset, you, <laughs> you're fat phobic. And we know when it comes to fat people, if you're living your best life, which living your best life involves like doing what you want to do. If you're living your best life and you do something and you, if, and people get mad that you're doing something that's making you happy, just think if this person was thin, would people still be mad? If the answer is no, them's people's is fat phobic. But then Lizzo did, but then, but, but then Lizzo did something that even those of us who love the dress, those of us who have no issue with Lizzo, like those of us who are fans, like those of us who are just not part of the fat phobic train, she go and do something that we can't, we can't support. Something now watch oh, this. My video block is Fucking covering asshole. it. You know what? It's just for that. Y'all can kiss my ass again. Kiss my ass, bitch. Girl. Kiss Girl, my ass. Girl, what I are you doing? Kiss my ass. <laughs> Girl. Kiss my ass. Girl. Come on now. Oh, oh. Kiss my ass. All right. <laughs> Wait, was my PTO? Yes, wait, 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 wait. It was wait. out. Oh, it wasn't. <laughs> Good. It was, no, I don't know. Somebody said it okay. wasn't. It was um, out. It was I... out. <laughs> no, no. You know, when I seen that, I'm just like. No, ma'am. You know, I mean, I get it. I get giving a big F you to the haters. Mm -hmm. But my thing is, when you're comfortable in your own skin, you don't have to do all that. Also, in addition to what Lovely T is saying, my thing is. Since when do we expose P-U-C-Y for haters? So since when do we give P-U-C-Y for haters? Excuse, girl, what are you doing? Tom Lizzo do something like this? I think about Lil Nas X. Lil Nas X is a troll. Okay, in case you didn't know, he's a troll, honey, and he's a very good one. He is skilled. He built his career off of trolling. This is how he responds to the haters. He puts a billboard up in your church. Gay, you may be entitled to financial compensation. Visit welcome to Montero.com, his album. This is how you troll the haters. He posted pregnancy pictures. And then when he gave birth, it was his album. Get your monty. Get your monty, baby. What are you doing, showy Pelusi lips for free for haters? Me and my cousin, because my cousin's a doctor. So she's on the front line in Cali, the one who's getting married. And we had a really, really heart, like serious heart to heart about the whole vaccine thing. You know, she gave me a lot of information. Um, and I'm going to talk about it in the cousin. Zoom meeting. I miss my discorders. I'm going to talk about it in the Zoom meeting. But she gave me a lot of info, you know, and she helped to, like, kind of make me feel more comfortable. If you are in Lovely T's Discord, please let me know. Because I want to hear that Zoom. I need to know, how do you talk to these anti-waxers? Not, and not even, excuse me, not anti-waxers. These wax-hesitant people, because Lovely T is very wax-hesitant, okay? 
and nobody could tell her nothing. How do you talk to wax hesitant people in a way that they actually calm down? Like, look at how calm she is. She has never spoken about the C vaccine in this calm of a manner ever. But like, I just want to know, like, what information did the cousin have that's different than what, you know, everybody already knows? I, I, I need to please, please, I pray if you have a friend who's a lovely tea fan please send them this part like just be like watch this part so that maybe they can help me like please 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 i love interracial relationships <laughs> do you like interracial relationships i am from the bank does that answer that yeah so to let people know what they can find in the bay area it's like oh there's a lot of Filipinos out there, and I'm happy. Okay, so when I leave out the bay, when I leave from the bay, as, as a youngster moving around, you actually see a girl she's kind of fair skin, light skin, and she's got a little hair and whatever, curly straight hair, whatever. And you're like, hey, what you mix with? And they would get offended. They'd be like, I'm black, I'm about to just. I don't know if you can hear that. The audio quality is so bad, but he said in the. In other parts of the United States, he'll see a black woman with lighter skin and straight hair, curly hair, and ask what she's mixed with. And they would get offended and say, well, I'm black. Let me tell you why we get offended. I say we because, I mean, listen, like, I'm not confused as a mixed person, like, often, okay? Like, it's, like, this is not, like, a reoccurring often problem for me, but um, it does happen from time to time. That's a dude. And literally it's only dudes. It's only dudes who ask, what do you mix with? Are you mixed? Um, you know, I've had women ask maybe kind of the same question, but how they ask it is, oh, where's your family from? Um, Oh, like, what's your, like, ancestry? Um, the, what, like, what's your family heritage? Um, you know, is your family, the, like, have, like, from, from a different country, some culture, language? Like, you know what I mean? They ask, like, questions that show, like, you're interested to learn about me and my culture. But when a dude is asking what you mix with, Actually, that's an insult. That's a backhanded compliment. It's kind of like, it's basically saying you're pretty for a black girl. What's offensive is, is that we know what you mean when you specifically say and ask, what are you mixed with? Are you mixed? We know that's code for you're pretty for a black girl. We know that's, we, we know that's the code trick. You could even be, you could even be a dark skin black girl but if you're pretty they will ask what you mixed with so that's why we get offended because we're trying to let you know homeboy that black women are also beautiful like un un unadulterated blackness is also beautiful and you don't have to be mixed to be beautiful or attractive. That's why we're offended because we know what you really mean when you say that. And I'm like, no, you definitely mixed with something. Though. See, 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 mm -mm. you see, mm, bitch. Cause that happens to me too. After I let them know I'm black, they, it's like, they don't believe me. Excuse you. You literally just saw me, like, now, like, for five seconds. You finna tell me I'm wrong about me? I don't believe you. Black women aren't th as pretty as you. So you're lying. That's what it's giving. So that makes it extra offensive because now you, now you, now I feel like you're calling me a liar. Like you, you are in such disbelief that black women can be 
beautiful or attractive, even in your eyes, you're in such disbelief that you would rather just say to yourself that I'm a liar. And you think I'm not picking up on that. And then we get mad, but in the bay, you can... Yes, we, we get mad because we know what you're trying to say. We know that you're giving, that you're actually insulting us. And here's the, here's the kicker. Here's the, here's the kicker. After you convince them that you just black, bruh, like this one dude wanted to argue with me. I told him I am literally nothing but sub-Saharan black African. Nah, 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 nah. You got to be your great grandpa. Like, bitch. I'm, I'm flipping fresh off the mother effing boat. Literally, there is nothing. There is nothing else. So much so that I went and took a DNA test. Just just in case one day I meet some idiot like yourself. I took a DNA test. Only for it to show me something I already knew. I am literally nothing else but sub-Saharan West Africa. Nothing else. Like you cannot get any blacker. What when I am, what I see, girl, man, this is a wig. Mine is the wig. But what you see is there's you can't get any blacker in DNA. Just admit it to yourself. Black women can be beautiful to even you. Even you can find a black woman attractive. That's why we get mad. And the kicker is, I didn't even, I didn't even say what the kicker is. The kicker is once you convince them you're black, they're no longer interested in you. Like you don't exist to them anymore. Yep. You can meet a girl before you can say her name, be like, who is she mixed with? And she'll probably tell you that her mama's this, her daddy's that, and mixed. Yeah, maybe because they're actually mixed. Maybe because. In the Bay, it's an area that there's a lot of interracial dating. So there's a lot of people who are actually mixed. Like what? Like, duh. Like, this dude pisses me off. Women have always been my favorite. Like, I don't think I've ever fallen in love with a woman that wasn't mixed. Yeah, because if the only people you allow yourself to date are mixed women, then yes, that would be the only woman you fall in love with. Why, why is he saying that like, 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 like that's supposed to be impressive? And it's the baby that just, really? Because I, it's something you get, I, I, and I, I feel like that way about life too, like, like biracial babies are. And people are mad at Sweetie for even indulging this. She's like, really? Tell me more. Like, it's like, girl, this is fudging stupid. Why are you acting like you're interested? It's like people feel like you're egging on stupidity. You can take, you can take the two ugliest motherfuckers from separate, from different races and they fuck and make a baby and that baby just be beautiful. It happens all the time. It happens and it's true. Bruh. You're like, I know y'all didn't make that little pretty baby. And you can see the features in it though. You're like, y'all did, I see it. Um, one thing that I really experienced about traveling outside the Bay Area. What's crazy is like, there ain't a lot of Filipinos in the rest of America. Because when I said I'm mixed with Filipino, they'd be like, yeah, you hella got it. But I'm like, nah, like in the Bay, that's, that's hella normal. So I think it's, it's, it's crazy how different areas got these like dominant type of you know, heritages. Because when you go to the Bay, it's hella Asian and it's hella black folks. Yeah, I see, I see the picture of your mom. He's only like, you know, mixed people. You can have an ugly black man and an ugly white woman and they'll create the most beautifulest mixed child. Um, no, 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 and no, okay? He was the one speaking. He was the one who brought it up. And I think that he was kind of saying that to gas her up and to hopefully get a shot at her. 
I you know, because we know she's single. She's no longer with Quavo. So I think that's why he led into that discussion. Because how, how else and why else would you say all that stuff and you would say it like you're proud, like it's a badge of honor, like it's an, like it's an accomplishment. Why, why else would you say that to some to somebody who you know is half Asian, half black? Duh. Bruh's trying to hit. So I'm not going to blame her for what a grown man was saying, but I thought it was just like, it was just, yeah, she looked uncomfortable too. She did. Like she did look uncomfortable during the conversation. Yeah. In case y'all didn't know, Saweetie is half black, half Asian. She's half black, half Filipino. And I also, I, there was a time that I just didn't understand I didn't know if Filipinos were considered Asian or Pacific Islander. So <laughs> I surveyed, I surveyed as many Filipino people as I could. And I like did all this Googling and all this stuff. And I was like, oh, okay, Filipinos are Asian. But what's interesting is like um, during the whole stop Asian hate thing, um, it's like more Asians than I've ever seen, like in my life, were like coming out talking about the social issues and the social issues that they discuss amongst themselves. Like, like black people, we, you know, we have our issues that we discuss amongst ourselves and Asians do too. And so apparently it's some BS where it's like, you know, like maybe like a ranking system of Asians and Filipinos are like down here because, you know, the Hispanics went and conquered over there and, you know, there's too much Spanish influence and you're too dark skin, you're too brown and you have, you know, features. Some of your features are like from other places and Girl, I was like, damn, so y'all colorists and, you know, I don't know, internally racist against y'all, like, y'all, like, dang, y'all got your own Asian, Asian cookout shits to talk about, <laughs> but, um, but yes, in case you didn't know, Sweetie is half Filipino, and I think she, you know, she was raised with with both like American black culture and uh, Filipino culture. And that is like, I don't know. That's really cool. So like, I just think it's so it, it's difficult to be raised in like two cultures. It is, it is difficult when you're young, but as you get older and you start to understand how you fit in the world, you come to really appreciate it at one point especially when he started talking about the babies and you have a lot of people look somebody else says queen Qu queen kwana says she was loving every bit of it <laughs> i don't know i'm just no, i'm just I saying mean, some people were saying that it looked like she was loving it low-key other folks were saying she looked uncomfortable i think for me in certain parts she did look kind of uncomfortable but was she looking uncomfortable because of what he was saying or was she looking uncomfortable because she knew if this got out there'd be some type of backlash mm. because you know now let's keep it real colorism is a very hot button topic on social media and i do feel like some people do somewhat weaponize it they see colorism in everything like how they try to do the whole ari uh, lennox and the whole uh chloe situation chloe bailey and they were saying there was all colorism and then chloe, uh, ari had to come out and say no it's not it had nothing to do with that so yeah you do have some you know, they look for colorism in every single aspect, just like you got some folks who look for, you know, any type of ism in every single aspect. Um, and don't get it twisted. That doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. The first time I ever, like, in a public setting addressed colorism was when I got to, I didn't interview, I got to ask uh, Misty Copeland a question. If you don't know Missy Copeland, she's this ballerina and she was like my idol and she wrote this book and I, I, I do love her book and this was the cover on her book, right? And the thing about Missy is she, like she's first black uh, ballerina, first black, you know, prima ballerina, prima donna, f f black, 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 black. And then I saw this picture on, her, on the cover and I'm like, this chick is light skin AF. And then I read the book and I'm like, oh, she mixed. Right. So she, her, her parents are half white, half black, both of them. 
So her dad is half white, half black. Her mom is half white, half black. So she is technically half white, half black. Look, ballet slippers are not pink just to be cute. They're supposed to match your skin tone, right? So I got this color because I'm brown. If I wear brown slippers, it makes my legs look longer. That's the point of having pink slippers. Most people who do ballet are white people. And, you know, y'all, a lot of white people are pink. <laughs> yeah, like, no, you know what I'm talking about? Like, just rem remove the spray tan and you're, you know, there's a lot of pink, especially where you, wherever you press, wherever you place pressure and then the blood flows there and it's like kind of pink. So you have pink ballet slippers. It's not because pink is a cute color. It's because, you know, as you're jumping, you're, it will better match your foot color. Okay. So, and then, so everything's around that. Everything is catered for white people hair, which is straight. Everything is catered for white people's skin tone. The, all the makeup, every, all the costumes, everything, everything is catered for a thin white people body type, which Misty Copeland is thin, but she got a booty. Okay. She got ass. She, got <laughs> she has, she's thin ballerina body, but she got some mass. Okay. So some shits didn't fit her. She, she had to get some stuff custom made. She got, she, this is more booty than what American ballet society is used to. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh my gosh. I know it's so, it sounds so dumb, but like, no, but for real, like th these are amongst, you know, and also like actually dealing with racist managers, racist school boards, you know, along with that. So I'm just like, okay, so, you know, if that's part of the struggle, then if it's easy to flat iron your hair, if it's easier for you to just, you know, like, you know, stay out of the sun and just stay as, as light as possible, then you can try, you can, I mean, it, I mean, that's, it sucks that you have to even try, but it's easier for you to try to mix in and try to make it, you know, and deal with, this is not my skin tone. This, this is not my hair texture. It's easier to try to assimilate. It's easier to try to assimilate to make it work than it would be if you, uh, you know, look like Grace Jones. Okay, Grace Jones, she could be a ballerina. She not gonna, she's not gonna match. It's harder to, to match this when you are Grace Jones color. So when she came to the Dallas Museum of Art, I asked, I stood up, and she was like, any questions? And I stood up and I asked, um, can you share if you feel that, you know, the fact that your skin tone is so light. So I asked her, do you feel like your skin tone being what it was and your hair texture being what it was? Do you, do you feel like that contributed to your ability to achieve what you've achieved? And she looked at me like, like no one ever asked her that question before. And it wasn't like a bad look. It was just like a surprise. And also like, the audience got kind of like quiet too because <laughs> like people were gonna and then I asked my question and it got quiet and my ex well I, you know I was dating him at the time but my ex is also white so he informed me the question I asked is a question that like white people would never ask because if they because one, they would never even know that's, that's a thing. Like they never, they would never even know that's a factor to think about. And, and then two, if they did somehow know that's a factor to think about, they, they would, uh, they would, f would feel like they wouldn't know how to word it. They, they wouldn't want to be offensive. So he was like, you know, like, so you, you shocked people. He was like, you kind of shocked some people. I'm like, 
oh well they gonna learn today shit like this this is this is what this is why you came to see misty copeland because you don't you there's not enough black people in ballet you you know you you came to learn some something so they learned today but anyway she answered the question she did she said yes um it did help she she you know she talked about it you know it's it's stuff like what i said you know makes it a little bit easier. She saw that it was even harder for the girls who were darker than her. And, um, you know, she, she said, yeah, that, that is a reason as to why me in particular, I'm the first black. So that was the first time, like I really saw and understood how colorism it's like actually like a real thing that like affects that literally affects can affect your life. I would like to apologize to anybody that's offended by my words. I am from okay. the Bay area. Go. I come up in the Bay and you know, it's the whole racial thing to me has never been a factor in my circles. It hasn't been like, um, uh, because you're one race and somebody else is another. We don't like you just because you're that race. We don't like you because you look like that, because you speak like that. And in the Bay, there are a lot of mixed cultures and, you know, mixed uh, people. Like it, it, got, it was like that long before I got there. I'm not really into the whole hatred of, I hate you because you're light or you're, you're the best because you're dark. I'm just not really into that. And I love my blackness. I love my family on my mother's side and my father's side. We have every complexion, every light, curly, dark, everything. You can't have blood in your body that makes you better than someone else. You can't be born of But that's parents, what you said, dude. You literally said mixed babies are more beautiful. That you can have an ugly white person, an ugly black person and the baby is going to be beautiful. You said you said you only date mixed women. What do you mean? Like, so now, dude, the things that you said that you're supposedly apologizing for is completely opposite of what you're saying now. Reading is no such thing. That beauty is, um, it's, it's in every, real beauty is in every um, economic class, every race. Then why do you only date mixed with, what are you, what are you trying to say? Shut and up. And you can go find it ugly exactly everywhere too. Shut up. Like, Dude. get his ass out of here. First of all, you're contradicting yourself, sir. First he said that if, okay, so if there's beauty in every color, in every race, in every social economic bracket, which to me is just stupid, okay? He done brought pro poverty into the mix. So he's saying that there's beauty in everything. Then why did you even start the conversation? Exactly. Why did you tell Sweetie that you've never dated a full black woman and that you only prefer light skin and make well mixed girls, not even light skin, mixed? If you see beauty in, in everything, oh, everywhere I look, there's beautifulness, there's prettiness and beauty. Everywhere I turn, there's beauty. Shut the fuck up. Yeah, you're lying. That's not really how you feel. Thank y'all for putting in the tiny violins because that's all it was. Same old song and dance. As soon as these dudes are held to the fire and they're caught out for their colorism, all of a sudden, oh, I love everybody. Even poor people. <laughs> what? <laughs> His whole response was contradictory to what he was saying to Sweetie. Because if you really saw beauty in everything, then you would have not, your mind would not even have went there to say, oh, I've never dated a full black woman. Mm -hmm. Well, why haven't you? Because obviously you don't see beauty in that. You mm -hmm. see beauty in something else. And you can have your preference. I'm not one. I don't knock nobody for having their preference, okay? You can date whatever you want to date, whoever you want to date. Male, female, light, dark, black, white. That is your personal business, right? But my thing is, with whatever your preference is, you don't have to knock your own. That's always been my issue with a lot of these guys, especially in hip hop, okay? Girl. Just because you want to date, you know, Ming Su does not mean that you have to go in on black women. In case you don't know, this is common in hip hop that, uh, you know, it's black men who dominate hip hop like unambiguously black men you think of the most popular applauded rappers aside from eminem obviously it's black men okay unambiguous blickety bl black and you see who they date who they marry they're dating and marrying um light-skinned women so it might be a black woman but she's light-skinned or she's mixed um, or she's not black at all. 
Um, so you see who they date, which you can date whoever you want to date, but we, we are seeing who y'all as a collective, like, it's just interesting. It's like all of it, like, it's just, it's just an interesting shift in what you normally date if, if you were not a rapper we see who you date, then we hear what you say in your songs. Yellow bonus, what he won't. And then he get on and leave your ass for a white girl, right? Like you are saying it in the songs. We see it in, you know, who you want in your music videos. And now, you know, in the 20, 2010s, y'all are bold enough to just go ahead and say it you don't like black girls like they will they are rappers who just they just straight up say i don't like black what do you mean by that i don't like dark skinned black girls i don't like black i don't like girls just they will literally point to their own skin and say i don't like girls this color yo so it's like why why are y'all doing that like we don't see any other type of celebrity men doing this she's gorgeous absolutely beautiful absolutely beautiful like but even she oh i'm covering her up with my picture but even she feels you know she has insecurities about her skin tone because her dad says this kind of stuff out loud. He, he said before she was born, he said, oh, I'm never having a dark skinned daughter. And then she was birthed. So, but you can't, you can't unsay that. You, he, you said that on like national television, you can't unsay it. You think your daughter's never going to see that? You think, you think like if she gets roasted on the playground, kids, you know, kids bully each other she gets roasted you don't think someone's gonna play that to her you know and then you know then you were confronted and you were asked what do you well what are you gonna do your your daughter is dark skin so what are you gonna do huh and you said some oh it's okay i meant you know other dark skin girls suck but my daughter is awesome because she's rich it's like what so now you doubling down like you really like that doesn't matter like to your child it doesn't you saying something like that is still telling your child oh i'm less than perfect like i'm not good enough daughter the the only reason he sees me as valid is because he is rich you know like it was it's just so messed up and it's like why is it just black rappers who feel so comfortable to do this other people, people have their own sexual preferences and romantic preferences, but it's weird when you want to dog people who are not your preference because other dudes don't, other men are not doing that publicly like that. Uh, child, I don't know, a Latino, just whoever outside your race does not mean that you have to start shitting on your own. And that's the stuff that I just don't respect. And it seems like it's constantly happening in the hip hop community. Where in order to, you know what I'm saying, to gas somebody up, they feel like they have to speak down on their own race. How many white dudes, Asian dudes, and Latino guys do you see who date, they're outside of their race, they, maybe they date black women. Maybe they date Asian women or whatever. But they're never going to turn around and then disrespect their own race. I don't okay. know, I just think the whole thing is just, it's just getting, it's getting annoying. And I understand people's frustrations, especially black women's frustrations on social media, mm -hmm. but I'm still not going to ever co-sign aborting all black boys. That is stupid. But <gasps> I do understand that? the frustration because again, it's you constantly happening in the hip hop community where it's that. always okay to disrespect black women and uplift that, women of other skin tones, other race. It had nothing to do with that's that. That's something I don't understand right now. Like, yo, I know there's like all kinds of different races and cultures that watch my video when it's like, this is so educational. <laughs> But, like, something that's been happening lately, I don't understand it. I don't understand it. It's this, this is disdain for black, like, within the, within the black Twitter sphere, okay? It's this disdain for black men. 
Um, I don't understand it. I mean, I, I can understand it, but I also just feel like, are you girls 12 years old? Like to go as far as to say black, black boys need to be a bird ed. I'm saying it weird so I don't get demonetized. Like to go that far, there's something to go that far as to say that what that means is no, now we see the issue isn't black men in your case. The issue is you. You need therapy. Some people are like, oh, it's a joke, it's a joke. No, it's not a joke. Like, if you see this stuff, this kind of discourse on black Twitter, if you see this stuff, it's not a joke. Like when you see dudes saying, I don't date my skin color. I don't, if you're this color, I don't date you. You're ugly. You're, you're stinky. You're, you're nasty. You're, when you see that, that's not a joke. When you see a Brits, all black boys, that's not a joke. Like these people are saying what they really feel. Girl, like it's girl. Nikki leaving nasty comments on TikTokers videos who spoke out about her defending and black fishing drama with Jesse. P.S. You look beautiful this. at the party. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. I didn't see that. No, I've not checked for anything that Nikki has done. Go on TikTok and you search Nicki Minaj has lost it. This is what comes up. Nikki, what is <laughs> this? Is too much, Nicki Minaj. Come on, Lizzo, too much. Nikki, too much. What do you? I noticed that she has been really active on social media lately. Somebody commented, I think Jesse's issue is more than the tan, it's her lips and style. She's literally trying to be black. Um, and then Nikki says, so all these reality stars y'all worship with big lips and tans are okay. Nikki, why are you playing dumb? No, we black women do not worship reality stars with deep tans and fake big lips. No, we don't. We don't. No, we don't. We don't. Who? If you say the Kardashians, you deserve a girl. No, black women are not worshiping Kardashians. But, but Jesse's where y'all draw the line, huh? No, Jesse, Jesse is not where we draw the line. We drew the line and people keep passing the line. Jesse's one of the many who passed the line. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know, Nikki. Nikki, I don't know if this is like a distraction from because she's going through that lawsuit. I don't know if this is what is this? What is this? It's too much. It's too like you got too much gas. You got too much gas. You need to pump the brakes. That's why I like when she went on live and she was interviewing her fans. That one, Sashin, Sashin, the one that she asked the question, oh, if people are saying some some gossip what are you gonna say to them and Sasha's like you need to get to the studio she's like oh me Sasha's like yes you you don't need to be worrying about this get your music done on time I'm gonna do what I need to do for you on time like Sasha you that's who you you need to hire Sasha Nikki you need somebody who's not afraid to call you out on your BS I get to get back give me the phone Give me the phone. It's naked black women. They're dark skin, bent over. You can see her little twat, booty, boobies, okay. nipples, stripper pole, money, dice. So it's kind of been causing controversy because it's one thing for the album to just hit stores like the album cover, but it's being promoted on like city buses and things like that. Oh, wow. So this white dude, he went off. He was not here for it at all. Let me see if I can find the video. Here it is. Art. This white man went off. 
Look at this bus that goes by in my neighborhood. What the fuck is this? What the fuck is this? Why would they put this on bus? This is on the side of a bus rolling through your street. Going on the side of your street. Is this what you want, Maybe. black women? Is this what Listen, you want, black women? Is this poppin'. what you want? Look at this bullfucking shit. Damn, Look at this Meek Mill ain't popping. Like, he had to have done this because he knew it would cause outrage. It's like, like you're putting, like, sexual things on, on, the, on the bus. You, he had to have done... He, he knew ain't nobody was going to buy his album. He had to cause... He has to cause a drama. On the side of a bus. Is this what you want, black women? Is this what you want? Is this how you want to be respected? Is this how you want to be respected? At us? This is how fuck? you want to look? This is how you want to be portrayed? What? Stand up to this bullshit. I'm from Philly. No, 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 sir. Why is he yelling at black women? Excuse you. Yell at the dude who put it on the bus. No, sir. You don't get to... <laughs> Actually, no. you, this is fucking disgusting bullshit. Look at this lady. Look at this. This is on the side of a bus where little girls can pull up and see this shit. That's her fucking. <laughs> Let's not mistake them what this pink dot is. This is disgusting. This is satanic bullshit. Damn, I'm so man. sick of this. I'm so sick of. Look at this shit that you're getting on. This is for everyone to see. Little girls are seeing this crap. It's fucking crap. Yeah. This is disgusting. Damn. This is disgusting. I'm so sick of them just rubbing Satanism right in your face. Wait, what oh, is he for, talking it's about? It's for art. What is he talking Like, he's so sick of, like, what What else? What are you talking about? This is art? Is this art? Black and white checkerboard. Um, what is that? It's a Masonic flooring. I mean, that's the kind of thing you put in an art museum. Like, you don't put... You don't put Michelangelo statues on, you know, on buses because, you know, the dude, his, his little, his wee-wee is out. You know what I mean? Like, it's, it's not the kind of thing you put on buses. No. Duh! Mm. It is garbage. But what, what I don't understand is why he's yelling at black women. Like, what did we do? What did we do? What did we do? Why is he yelling at us? Money! Money, 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 money! Garbage! All right, child. He ran for about three minutes. Damn. Let me go ahead and come back on the screen. So he was okay. saying some real stuff, you know, and the fact that he's saying, black women, is this how you want to be portrayed and, and all that? And maybe he was looking for a viral moment, but he does have a lot of good yeah. points. Yeah, I mean, um, it's coming off as you trying to go, like, it, that was too much. And then when he's like, black women, like, blaming black women, like, why can't people leave black women alone? That's what... Like, seriously, it's like every second video I make, I got to say, can you please just leave black women? Like, leave us alone. Leave us alone. In the entertainment business, from music to movies to television shows, things like that, they're always trying to push the envelope. I remember I said a while back that I grew up in an era where R&B singers were not in competition with female rappers as far as the way they carried themselves. And like I was saying, even like a month or so ago, I cannot tell the difference between like a Haley, excuse me, um, Chloe Bailey and like even Cardi B or Meg Thee Stallion in the way they dress, in the way they perform. You know, so everything is very, very sexualized. That is the world that we live in. That is yeah. the day and age that we live in. Um, am I a big fan of the album art? No, I'm not a big fan of it. And one thing I, I will say, too, that's always bothersome is when it comes to like overt sexualization. Mm hmm. It's usually always darker skinned women that yeah. they end up using in those type of adverts. Like when it comes to like being seen as a love interest or being seen as some level of like, you know, respectability, they always go lighter. But when it needs to be something super raunchy, mm -hmm. super gutter, like he was saying, even in the picture, let me pull it back up for y'all. But she's always on point with this kind of stuff. And because it's going to be a very cold winter. Let me go ahead and share you with you guys this new story. Girl, okay, I'm finna get my Uggs. Listen. I, <laughs> she's so on point with this stuff no for real i'm finna i'm finna order my parka in ugg boots next tonight prepare to throw a few more logs on that fire this year the federal government now confirming that our home heating bills are about to be sky high last week we brought you national fuels winter heating forecast the company says the average winter heating bill will be 43 percent higher compared to last year now the U.S. government is predicting that household heating bills will jump by as much as 54% compared to last winter. So on average, you can expect to pay more than $700 this winter to heat your home, making this the most expensive Damn. year for gas-heated homes 
in more than a decade. With nearly half the homes in the country using natural gas for heat, we're going in depth tonight, working to find some ways to help save you money. Our Natalie Fami found that using a wood-burning stove or fireplace can really offset some of those rising costs. I don't have one of those. Big ones, there's ones that are infrared that don't make any noise, and they will really warm a room. So get them before they're gone, because I've noticed even at Walmart, a lot of the space heaters are gone, or they don't have as many. So the supply chain is crazy. Yes, put plastic on the windows. Thank you, Nurse Courtney. That's another good tip. So they're leaving a lot of good tips in the comment section. Plastic on the windows, I've done that as well. I hope you guys enjoyed reacting to the stream with me. Um, like, what do you think? Should I do this? Um, this is, I don't know. I have, I'm going to edit this down, obviously, but... What do you guys think of me reacting to other people who cover it? I did this with Deaf Noodles the other day, too. Um, he didn't talk about anything today that I care to react to. But, you know, what do you, what do you think of this? Do you, did you enjoy watching Lovely Tea with me? I need to know you. I need the comments. <clears throat> I need the comments so that I know what to do in the future now. The newest season of You has come out. Okay. The newest season of You has come out, so I need to go watch that. I'm going to watch you. Maybe in the morning I will edit this video. We'll upload it, have a little key key on a Saturday or a Sunday, you know what I'm saying? So I appreciate you. Make sure you subscribe if you... Um, kind of vibe and like this video if you like it so that this channel can grow more because we want to build more parasocial relationships with each other. Until next time, much love, much luck, peace out.